Back in March of 2021, Volkswagen held what they called their Power Day, and they revealed their plans to manufacture their own unified prismatic battery cells to apparently compete with Tesla's 4680 batteries. Let's dive into VW's progress with this new battery technology, discuss when VW's unified cells will find their way into production EVs, and compare this to Tesla's 4680 battery manufacturing progress. I'm John, and welcome to CleanerWatt. If you remember, when you go back to battery day, one of the key benefits of Tesla's new 4680 battery technology, once it's fully ramped up, is the ability to reduce drastically the cost per kilowatt hour of batteries. In like manner, VW's new unified cell technology, with that technology, they aim to reduce battery costs by 30 to 50% with their new technology in the future. Now, when it comes to how VW plans to roll out these unified battery cells to their products, According to the Power Day presentation, by 2030, they hope that 80% of their products, and I believe this is talking about the Volkswagen Group, not just the Volkswagen brand, but 80% of their products will use this unified battery cell. And you can see here that the rollout is supposed to begin next year in 2023, and we'll talk about how that's going to begin with their new factory. And you can see that they plan to quickly transition between 2023 and 2030 to 80% of their products having this new battery cell. Now, like Tesla's 4680 battery technology, this unified cell is something that Volkswagen is working on in-house. Yes, they are buying battery cells from partners, but they're also going to be building these battery cells themselves at their own factories. At Power Day, they mentioned that they are planning six new gigafactories that should each produce when fully ramped 40 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. And by 2030, that would give them a total of 240 gigawatt hours of batteries being produced per year. Their first factory is well underway, and this is actually in partnership with the battery company Northvolt, and that's supposed to start production in 2023. And once again, it should be able to produce, once it's fully ramped, up to 40 gigawatt hours of these unified battery cells. This factory is currently in development in Sweden, and as you can see on this picture from the Northvolt website, um, construction is coming along very nicely for this site. Volkswagen's second plant that's going to manufacture these unified battery cells is located in Germany, and that's supposed to start production in 2025. As you can see in this drone footage that VW recently put out on their press website, um, the beginning stages of the construction for this factory have begun. In addition to construction beginning for the main battery factory, Volkswagen does have a battery research lab at this location that has been open since September of 2021, where VW is developing and testing the new battery technology prior to the cell factory's completion. Now, of course, between now and 2030, VW hopes to have six of these battery factories going, and they recently announced, more recently, that another one of these factories, um, the third of the six factories they hope to build, is gonna be built in Spain. According to a press release from Volkswagen's website, this new battery factory in Spain, they're hoping to start production of this factory in 2026, and they're hoping to start construction by the end of this year. Do note that the Spain battery factory is still subject to final approvals, which I assume to be government approvals, and they mention that among these approvals, quote, for most, the PERTE submission, which is a Spain subsidy program, they're waiting for final approval on that as well. Now, when it comes to the location of the other three battery factories that VW hopes to build, you can see that in this chart, um, they plan to build one in Eastern Europe, and then the other two factories, the location has not yet been decided upon. This is, of course, really good news, and I'm glad to see a Volkswagen progressing nicely on their plan to uh, reach this 240 gigawatt hours of batteries produced per year because Volkswagen has a lot of great EV products that they're bringing out um, in the future and that they currently have on the market. And these new unified battery cells should allow Volkswagen to produce more of these EVs and maybe even at a lower cost. Now, when it comes to how this compares to Tesla, by 2030, Volkswagen is aiming for six battery factories with a total production approaching 240 gigawatt hours per year if all goes to plan. At battery day, Tesla mentioned that they hope to be producing three terawatt hours of batteries by 2030. Now, Tesla did initially plan to be producing 100 gigawatt hours of batteries 
um, this year, by the end of this year. And I'm unsure if they're going to be able to ramp up battery production to this 100 gigawatt hour level that they had planned because the 4680 battery production ramp has been slower than Tesla anticipated. During Tesla's most recent Q2 2022 investors conference call, Drew Baglino and Elon Musk gave some updates on their 4680 battery production. Here are a few key quotes from that call. In response to a question about how the 4680 production ramp was coming along, Drew Baglino mentioned the following, quote, We expect to ramp total 4680 production to exceed 1,000 per week by the end of the year, hopefully before, well before. Based on the context, it's really unclear whether he was referring to um, this 1,000 per week being for the pilot line alone or for Giga Texas alone or even for both factories combined. But nonetheless, um, based on the context, it does seem like this 1,000 he's mentioning means enough batteries to produce 1,000 Model Ys per week. The standard range all-wheel drive Model Y equipped with 4680 batteries apparently has a battery pack somewhere around 68 kilowatt hours. So if they produce enough batteries for 1000 of these Model Ys, that would be 68 megawatt hours of batteries per week. And if you extrapolate that out, that would be a run rate of around 3.536 gigawatt hours per year. During this conference call, Drew Baglino then went on to discuss their 4680 production increases and also the improvements that they've made at the Fremont Pilot Cell Factory, which I will definitely cover in great detail in an upcoming video. And then Drew went on to mention how cell production was coming along at Giga Texas when he mentioned, quote, Specific to Texas last quarter, cell equipment was fully installed and commissioned, and we produced our first commissioning car sets of cells through the end of the line. Our target for Texas is to begin production this quarter and aim for Texas to be capable of exceeding Cato weekly output before the end of this year. Now, when it comes to how Tesla's current and future 4680 battery production plans compare to VW's production progress and plans, Tesla definitely has a nice head start over Volkswagen. Whereas Volkswagen is planning to start production of their new unified cells in 2023, Tesla is already producing 4680 batteries at their pilot line in California, and they're making great strides as they move towards mass production. In the coming years, if all goes to plan, Giga Texas and Giga Berlin should be able to produce somewhere around 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries each per year, at least that's what seems to be Tesla's plan, plus whatever capacity the Fremont pilot line is able to produce, which I estimate based on past comments to be somewhere around 10 gigawatt hours per year when that factory is fully ramped. And this all adds up to around 210 gigawatt hours per year of 4680 batteries based on what we currently know about Tesla's production and production plans. But Tesla has much bigger plans for um, 4680 production in the future, so I have no doubt that between now and 2030, Tesla will likely start building quite a few more battery factories so they can reach their goal of 3 terawatt hours of batteries being produced per year by 2030. Tesla's goals of reaching 3 terawatt hours of batteries per year by 2030, that of course is way larger of a goal than Volkswagen's goal, but nonetheless, 240 gigawatt hours of batteries per year is a lot of batteries and that's going to produce a lot of EVs for the market. It'll be interesting to see how Volkswagen is able to ramp up this new battery cell. Um, of course, they're doing it with their partnership with Northvolt for that factory. It appears like some of these other factories that Volkswagen is building will be their own factories that they're running. Um, nonetheless, I hope Volkswagen is able to ramp up very quickly and I hope Tesla is able to ramp up very quickly as well. Now, last year I did a video comparing Tesla's 4680 battery technology to Volkswagen's uh, new unified battery cell, and I'll link to that video in the description. But just quickly, a quick comparison between these two battery technologies. VW's unified cell is a prismatic battery cell, whereas Tesla's 4680 battery is, of course, a cylindrical battery cell. When it comes to the chemistry of Tesla's 4680 batteries, we know based on what Elon Musk has said in the past that the 4680 battery cells will only use a nickel-based cathode chemistry, whereas Volkswagen's new unified cells will not only use nickel-based cathodes, but they're also going to produce these batteries with iron-based cathodes as well. Nonetheless, what really matters about these battery technologies is reducing the cost per kilowatt hour of batteries to make EVs more affordable, and both Tesla and Volkswagen are aiming to do just that with their new battery technologies. 
So in conclusion, I don't know about you, but I'm really happy to see Volkswagen investing so much in electric vehicles and building out their own battery cells, their own battery factories. This gives me a lot of hope for VW's future, and I'm definitely rooting for their success, and I hope they're really successful in the future with these new battery cells and with our new electric vehicles. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.